everybody, welcome to Backish Some Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. I've been alluding to this story for a long time, so I figure we finally just talk about it. Mm. This is Avengers The Final Host from Jason Aaron and a number of artists. Uh, from Sarah Pacelli to Ed McGuinness to Paca Medina, there's a lot of different artists working on this book. Mm. Though it all kind of really blends together quite well. Oh, uh, and so it, they achieve a, a, like a, a synergy. A, yeah, yeah, a look that works. I think so. Uh, well, it works for this. It doesn't work for me. Uh, Ed McGuinness <laughs> is the primary artist on this story, and he does subsequent arcs afterwards. Uh, Ed McGuinness has acquired taste. He draws some like really fun, high-flying superheroics. He was great uh, for certain titles like Hulk Red when they introduced the Red Hulk. A lot of big, burly people, right? Mm. He's a very he, he's a very good Hulk artist. He's a very good artist in general. Uh, but when he's drawn the Avengers, it just continues to contribute to the reason why I don't read Avengers books. Mm. Does everyone look huge did. and swole? Yeah, everyone's swole, yes. If you ever read uh, Superman, Batman, Public Enemies, he drew that as well. Oh, yeah. And we did that on this show. And yeah, everyone's just gigantic and cartoony. And I, I like, listen, I'm not, I know it sounds like I'm knocking him, but it's not. Like, it, it, it's, it's consistent and it works and it's a lot of fun to see. But it only um, works for certain characters. I think it only works for certain characters and I think it only works for certain tones. Mm. Uh, this is trying to be a palate cleanser during a time when Marvel was at its most controversial in the last, like, three years. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, look at She-Hulk's neck. Now, She-Hulk well, is... She's, she's a Hulk. She's well, a Hulk, yes. Yeah, but I they changed it. her. Because yeah, she didn't used to be all gross. Looking. No, she, she, that's... <laughs> listen, you're not wrong. Like, the, But there are a lot of people who agree with you, but for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Uh, she, Jennifer Walters She-Hulk at this time... She had been accidentally hit by a missile during Civil War II, which is yet another reason why Civil War II sucks. Uh, it, it's, it, she was it, accidentally hit by a missile. Yeah, they were fighting so Thanos. she's a Hulk. What does it matter? Well, Bendis needed to take her off the table. Oh. So this time, the missile hurt. <laughs> was it like a super missile or like a... Bendis didn't give it more thought than we are right now. Oh. The fact is, she gets hit by a missile. She gets put into a, a coma. When she wakes up, she has PTSD. Oh. And you're from like... From missiles? Yeah, no. Yeah, from so, being in a coma believe, and stuff. Believe it or not, it's from Thanos. She's like scared of Thanos now. And they, they did this whole run of She-Hulk, which I gave about six issues. And I'm like, that arc was pretty good. And then I was like, oh, I gotta get off this train. But the idea was that, like, it, you know, She-Hulk, she's scared now. And so as a result, the Hulk persona reflected that. So, like she never knew fear before she got hit by a missile. And now that she's been hit, like, Thanos! Yeah. What's the correlation yeah, there? So that well, is, he Thanos was responsible, I assume. Missile. Nope, that is literally the sub... The, those are the... Well, I was... Yes. The book that we I was in was about fighting Thanos. Yeah. So. And the other person just wants to write a story about PTSD and doesn't give a crap about the details from that Bendis event. Or right. how it all works. That, yeah, all that matters is if I'm able to tell the story that I right. have been assigned to do. Let me just shove this round peg in this square hole yeah, if I big just push time. hard enough. And so in that, at that point, She-Hulk was gray and big and scary and savage. Mm. And it was kind of like trying to kind of earn the title of Savage She-Hulk when she first debuted. Okay. But even when she first debuted, she was like just kind of an Amazonian type. She was more like a Attack of the 50-Foot Woman as opposed to like Hulk. Right. Even still, they mm. called her Savage She-Hulk for a time. Uh, but they wanted to earn that title back and make her kind of scary. And, uh, and then they do a round of therapy as they're canceling the book and she ultimately does get back to being green, non-PTSD, Jennifer Walter She-Hulk. That's so weird that her that's color weird. would change. Yeah, but that's a Hulk well, thing. That's a, yeah. I've seen the Hulk's color change, but I always yeah. thought it was like some weird radiation <laughs> No, effect. no, yeah, you, some like magic something or Something more shit. literal. No, it's, it's actually a reflection of his own, you know, trauma or personality. That's hmm. weird. <laughs> it only works for Hulks. So, except for Red Hulk, who is mad all the time, but like, you know... Yeah, but it, so is regular Hulk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so well, why would the color matter? I guess like, it was just, we, if, it was just if you or I is having emotional difficulty, like we might gain or lose weight. If you're a Hulk, you you change color. Yes, like a and personality. Mood stone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. You you have mood Hulks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so they do wind up fixing She Hulk, fixing her, and then uh, <laughs> oh, they fix her PTSD. Literally, fix she's it. just she goes through a therapy session where she like actively fights Thanos in it, uh, among other things. Oh, it's like one of those VR things where you relive the trauma. Okay. Yeah. So danger. Room. Okay. Yeah, only it was only in her mind. 
Virtual. Virtu it was yeah. virtual, but, you know, All right. on the mindscape. On the mindscape, fine. But that being said, uh, that's still not how that works. And also, uh, even though we do kind of put her back at square one, uh, some folk didn't want to do that. And mm -hmm. some folk who had been writing for Marvel for a long time were like, I only want to use the elements of Marvel that I've either written, <laughs> influenced, or care about. And that someone is Ace and Aaron with this Avengers run. <laughs> And so he's going to do some things in here that you're like, how does that make sense? Well, it doesn't. And so you know, Jason <laughs> well, that's Aaron... The thing. Well, that's the thing. Is it, it doesn't it, at all. Is and one of those things, uh, Thor having his arm cut off. Yes. So he's unworthy Thor, mm. but he still has the hammer? Well, now no, he does he, because the, yeah. that, that run had ended. Or at least yeah. that, that, run, that, that arc had ended. Aaron had been on Thor forever and, in fact, only recently finished up. Uh, the Thor run, but yeah. in that story, you know, Jane Foster became Thor, Thor Odinson is still a physical person, it's not friggin' Shazam or anything, right. so he became the unworthy Thor, of course Nick Fury whispered in his ear, and so he couldn't lift Mjolnir anymore, Jane Foster could, she becomes Thor, yeah. uh, so Odinson's just kind of like wandering around, and during one subsequent battle he gets his arm chopped off, Thor ends up using the Destroyer's arm as a replacement, because that's how appendages work, you just grab one, there you go, you're ready yeah. to go. Well, you're back I mean, if you're a He-Man character, I guess sure. if you're a character. magical character and you're using the same type of magic that runs the Destroyer yeah. and also fueled your loins, then yeah, why not? So, Thor has a golden arm. And he's Thor again, but... It used to be dark, right? It used to be silver, or at least from mm. the Destroyer, but then, like, he got, he got upgrades. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna get into the whole Thor story, but <laughs> su suffice it to say, Mjolnir's out of the picture. Oh. As is Jane Foster as Thor. So Odinson is Thor again, but has no Mjolnir. And so he still feels unworthy, but mm -hmm. he is not the unworthy Thor Because he doesn't have a physical manifestation of his worthiness. <laughs> Without my hammer? Yeah. I'm nothing. How will people know I'm worthy if I don't ha carry I a hammer that proves I, I am? But it, it's literally etched on the side. That being like, said, I know I'm worthy, but like nobody else does. I can't like shove it in their face. Yeah, no, but like I can't I even think that I'm worthy. I have no hammer to prove it. Yeah, yeah. how, does yeah, how know can I affirm worthy? it every morning? Right. I know I'll have a mug on the outside that says I am worthy. Yeah, <laughs> it's like world's number one. Od yeah, F most worthy. Yeah, worthiest <laughs> drink. Uh, the idea here is that we're resetting up the Avengers. Actually, we did a, a really great Avenger story. Arguably one of the best in years, called Avengers No Surrender, which was a weekly series that came out on time by the top writers at Marvel. I like that you have to specify on time. Well, because well, like none of so them do. It really does. It's, yeah. it's so rare, and because they Gotta don't give come out, props. and when they don't come out on time, they matter less and less because their impact has to be lessened because then something else has to come out. So No Surrender comes out, and that book realigned all of the Avengers titles. Because, of course, they had Avengers movies coming out. They're trying to, you know, capitalize on the cachet of the, of the cinemas showing off these Avengers movies. And so they had, like, USA Avengers and Uncanny Avengers and Avengers and all this other crap. And then they were like, let's coalesce them into one book. We're trying to get people who don't read comics to read an Avengers book. And we just threw six different Avengers titles at them. Why don't we just kind of make it one? You know, maybe it's easier to convince people to buy one Avengers title. Right. Instead of three or four that have covers on them featuring characters that don't appear in our movie. That story coalesces, and so everyone who Aaron wants to put in the Avengers sticks around, and everyone who he doesn't leave. Yeah, they go away. Yeah, and in fact, all of them go away, and so the Avengers are reformed in the final host. Well, you just get like a pink slip somehow? Yeah. Well, sometimes, you know, it, 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 it depends on what era of the Avengers you're talking about. There are multiple stories in the Avengers history which feature on the cover every Marvel character and Captain America going, six of you guys are in, and everyone else got to get out. And you're like, that's got to be demoralizing. I, you gotta, I got to see them all in, 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 like in one place and see which characters keep popping up but don't end up on the team. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. There's always so much room on the Quinjet. <laughs> exactly. So we're, we're setting up the new old Avengers. Yeah, okay. Also, Aaron wants to play with continuity and mythology. So he introduces during another thing, oh, no. the Avengers 1 million BC. 1 million, oh yeah, that's these guys? Yes. 1 million BC. Yeah, a million years ago, there was an Avengers team. Not an Avengers team that traveled back in time. These are the characters 
who represented the Marvel Universe a million years ago, who technically no. were on a team, no. <laughs> and we're going to call them the Avengers 1 million BC, because... Avengers is a catchy title that sells. So it's like a pre-agrarian like agrarian hunter-gatherer society that's occurring yes. now without like cities or anything. Yes. The pre-Vengers? How do... <laughs> yes. Ooh. Or the BC-Vengers. <laughs> cool. So, but the, the... And they have like language and stuff? Yeah. Of course, they speak English. Well, fire. L when, I, when, I, when I name all of them, you'll, you'll understand. You know, like Odin is the leader sure. of the of the Avengers and he is banging the Phoenix the Phoenix the friggin Phoenix the actual Phoenix the Phoenix who is of course inhabited a body of a of a proto woman who then evolved her so that she's sexy uh, <laughs> so Phoenix is on the Avengers and so oh and that's that's a big retcon oh my god before Freya what? Odin and Phoenix were banging and he was in love with her like they were a serious item but something happened and they happened. lived on Earth well they they went to Earth a lot okay also, you know the Eye of Agamotto? Well, yeah. there's a person named Agamotto, and that person is on the Avengers BC. Also, He's there's got, like, like antlers and stuff. Yeah. Growing out his back yeah. or some shit. Uh huh. And the first Iron Fist. And oh. the first Black Panther. And the Star Brand, which is a concept that was invented by Jim Shooter during the New Universe era in the 80s. And Aaron keeps trying to like remind you about like those universe characters, and you're like, go away! No one cares Get about out them. of here. So Starbrand is a Hulk. He's like, it, he's Hulk like. It looks he, like the Starbrand is like a force in the universe that uh, attaches to a person, and so this is like a like a Cro Magnum type person that, in combination with the yeah, <laughs> like we want to draw a Hulk. It's yep. we, we can't just say that, like, there was a, a, a meteor with gamma radiation that hit a guy and made a Hulk. I'm amazed nah. they didn't just make it a juggernaut if you wanted to go that route. Hey, right? yeah. I, well, it depends on when the crystal well, I want to draw born. more like a Hulk, though. Yeah, well, and I want, and I, I want to use Starbrand, Nightmask, and other characters right. from the new universe, so I gotta make it Starbrand, but still get a Hulk in there. And um, are forget. we going to ignore the Ghost Rider? We yeah. are not. There's also a Ghost Rider. It's the spirit of vengeance that just just lives on Earth sometimes. And But, you know what how... He, what, does he ride a single round stone? No, 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 no. <laughs> he rides uh, like a deer. No, he rides a woolly mammoth. Oh, of course A flaming he does. skeletal woolly mammoth. It's not skeletal in this drawing. Well, sometimes it is and sometimes oh, it isn't. Oh, okay. That would be cooler. It would be way cooler. This is just Except a for the fact that it wouldn't have a trunk. On fire, though, it's still pretty dope. Yeah, it wouldn't have the trunk. What the hell? If it was a skeleton, it would just be like the tusks. two tusks. Uh, they could, That's like, all you skeleton. need. They could yeah. just draw it with a skeletal trunk. It's fire. Yeah. Have you ever been be like, to a... a... There's no bones in the Have trunk. you ever been to a spirit Halloween? They have like... They have all these different animal skeletons. Yeah, they have like spider skeletons. They have spider skeletons and squid skeletons. Squid! So the Avengers BC is this concept that Aaron's like, what do you think, folks? And everyone went, well, when you first introduced them on the internet, it was just a really awesome drawing, which we all responded to. Yeah. And then you keep using them, and it's like, who cares anymore? Yeah. Well, they're going to fight some Celestials. Yes, because, of course, it's a million years ago, so that's when the Celestials came. It's always this one. I know. Why yeah. is it always this one? Because yeah. I don't remember his freaking name. Very well, impressive. It's not actually that one. They, they all oh. kind of look the same. But oh. the idea here is that... <laughs> there was. They'll have six eyes, yeah, or whatever those Sometimes. are. Sometimes, oh. yeah, well, or spotlights. They all look like Jaegers. Yeah, no, <laughs> Jaegers look like them. <laughs> Celestials were invented decades before Jaegers. The, the whole setup is that the Avengers a million years ago fought a dark Celestial and then thought they killed it and like buried it in the ground. <laughs> did they bury it under rocks? They did. And uh, what what uh, in the like birth of man? So it's like in South Africa somewhere. Oh, okay. I was going to ask if it was like the Bermuda Triangle. No, no, no. It's, it's <laughs> like somewhere it, where mystical things coalesce. No, it's like the cradle civilization. So uh, All right. but it's there's a reason for that of course and it's like they thought they killed it, it's been on the ground uh, and, and then of course like we cut to a million years later and uh, you know, it's still causing trouble. Why is Odin giving Something a shit about stirs. Midgard? Uh, it's Back one of then, his realms. it's one of his realms, and, like, there wasn't anybody there to give him lip about it. It was, so like, it was, a, it was cool. like going to a park. Yeah, yeah. He just had a good time. Like a nature preserve. Right? Plus, there's so, all these, these neat-looking characters that, like, are that kind of on my level. Are <laughs> all there yeah. already. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't have to people weird. it. So, anyway, then we are reintroduced to the trinity of the Avengers, uh, Cap, Iron Man, Thor, and... 
so these three have kind of been put through the ringer uh, in terms of like story and fandom. Mm. Uh, Captain America was revealed to be a secret Hydra agent and then uh, not. And uh, Iron Man was beaten into a coma and then uh, not. <laughs> and Thor was unworthy and then uh, not. The thing is they'll never be able to go back. Like you'll never have a Thor in the Marvel Universe in continuity who will confidently pick up Mjolnir because now he's like damaged. You know, he's like, he's learned humility. It's no. like, it's like post-alcoholic Tony Stark. Uh, well, he's like waiting for the day to like where I reach for it and it won't budge. Yeah, like it did for a good year or two in stories. But, but I keep picking it up and it's fine, but there's gonna be a day. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. He's like, oh, I'm glad I'm worthy today. I, I wake so, up in terror every night. Yeah, yeah, PTSD <laughs> Thor, thank you. So why does he have a hammer here? Because at some point they introduced him like in the having new a new power. A yeah, he's the god of hammers, and so he can just call down hammers as much as he wants. Any kind of hammer. You but have to be not kidding Mjolnir. me. But it's not. It Mjolnir. just looks exactly like Mjolnir. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah. At one point he fights it's like a the video juggernaut. Game power. Yeah. He's gonna summon hammers from That's, the ether. Yep. Yep. He fights juggernaut. One That's point, a bad video game power. He just keeps power. dropping hammers and he keeps hitting juggernaut with it, and like none of them can stand up to it because none of them are Mjolnir. Yeah. <laughs> So he yeah. just as many hammers as he wants. Yep. Just Any type. Hammer. Yeah. Where well, does it come from? You know, Asgard, I guess. Where do they go afterwards? Where does the dream go when you wake up? <laughs> Nowhere. Well, does it just like cease to disappear? Or do they break? And they break. Like, and there's like rubble? Yeah. Yeah, it's not like they fade away like when you're playing a video game and you walk right. away from a body and then you come back and they're gone. So it's got to be like, you could be like a great WWE wrestler <laughs> where like, you know, everywhere. he's like, I'm going to call down the hammer and he yeah. smashes it yeah, over his he, head. He would kill them. Like, no, well, then you can sign pieces and yeah. give it out to the it's fans. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, break, here you go. Yeah, if, if he were to do that. Hammer me! And can normal people pick up those hammers? I assume. Okay. Yeah, there should no, just be hammers. He's not Odin. Like, he right. can't ascribe magical enchantments to these hammers to make them... Worthy or Can not. he spin them and fly with them? Uh, I think so. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't read Thor. <laughs> I see. Can he call down lightning with them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He is still Thor. All right. Incidentally, a million years ago, Odin wields Mjolnir. Oh. So in the future or present... He doesn't become Thor? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That's weird. weird. He, he enchants it later. So uh, the Trinity's hanging out. They're at a bar. And uh, okay. you know, and they're celebrating Tony's resurrection, so to speak. And, uh, and and Steve's like, "Good, you're here. We can reform the Avengers." And Tony Stark's like, "Ugh, I don't want to do that. That always goes bad. Every time we do, we always end up fighting." And it's like, team. no, no, no. Every time we do, on it. within the last ten years, yeah, it, it worked out the first. I don't understand. Several your... decades. How? Well, it wasn't I have very no memory of this. Of that time, though. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> So sometimes we, I wasn't on it. Sometimes right. it was totally different people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mess. I was well, useless. And, and, and as, in, from yeah. Tony Stark's perspective, and sometimes I wasn't relevant enough. Right. <laughs> so the the Trinity is here, and they're you know they're they're musing about maybe bringing back the Avengers. Is Tony allowed to be in a bar? Yeah, <laughs> of course he is. He orders a Shirley Temple. They all have like their different drinks. There you go. Like I, I, Captain America gets a beer, Thor gets a mead, and Tony drinks a, a Shirley Temple, which is what I drink when I'm in a bar. There you go. So. Uh, it's okay. So I, I, I hate this. <laughs> and uh, let me tell you why. <laughs> Forming the Avengers used to be fun to see until you started doing it over and over again with the same people. Mm -hmm. Seeing Cap, Iron Man, and Thor reform the Avengers again as a kind of apology tour to all the fans who quit the books because everybody was different when the Avengers were formed the last time rings hollow and ultimately ends up being really boring. Mm. Particularly this volume where it's just like, remember all the stuff that made the Avengers unsellable? Here they are again. <laughs> Well, because someone somewhere liked that team, so now I have to, you know, no, bow I, in deference to I, it? No, no. Because that would be a thing that you would... That's a calculated move. Like, let me try and, and ape off of the nostalgia of former readers or older readers. Uh, this is, maybe the new readers won't notice that we're doing it all over again. But even still, if you were to do it all over again, it might be fun. But you picked as your main antagonist of this arc... Fucking Celestials. 
What? Yeah, Celestial is a super powerful. You it's can't. A very dangerous threat. You can't fight them. <laughs> like, Captain America can't fight a Celestial. End of story. Well, but what why, if he could? Well, that's why we're not bringing Spider-Man on the team. Right. That's why Spider-Man, Luke Cage, Spider-Woman, Iron Fist, Doc, that's why all the characters in the Wolverine. Avengers can't be on this team. Because that's also what Bendis did, and we're trying to get away from that. What the hell is Iron Man going to do? Right. Well, he does all kinds of stuff. He's he got in fact, science. He, in shit. fact, builds a celestial fighting suit that's like the size of, of a goddamn skyscraper yep. that punches it. And it's like, okay, you lost me. Like, you lost me from the get go. Uh, and like, listen, this, this is a, this appeals to classic Avengers fans or new Avengers fans who love things ratcheted up to 11. This is the same guy who was like, hey, if, in the New 52, if you introduce the Justice League, don't have them fight Darkseid as your first villain. <laughs> He's the most powerful. It's like if they punched God in the first issue. Where do you go from there? Does he well, fight Toy Master after that? Yeah. Cheetah? <laughs> Even no, the we, Joker we gotta pales get you in with a, with, a, with a hook. We yeah. gotta, we gotta hook you at the beginning, yeah. otherwise you won't read. Right, right. Otherwise, why would we have all these powerful characters right, on you're here? you're only thinking about the first volume. You're not thinking about volume two. If I'm still reading and then I get to the next volume and it's like, oh, our interpersonal drama. Like, I would read that if that were the conceit of the book. If that was is, what they were trying to do. Yeah. It's out, there's not gonna be a volume two. <laughs> there is non-stop volumes. Well, this that's... is one of all of the volumes. Jason Aaron's still doing this, and this came out in 2018. Mm. This is still going. Now they're fighting like Mole Man and stuff. No, it's... <laughs> if you have a I celestial can't... fighting robot, a yeah. Jaeger, essentially. Well, I assume yes. it gets destroyed in this book. Of course it does. Yeah. He blows it up. Of course. Well, there's yeah. no reason not to build another one. Well, he, he no, said it, it cost hard. like four billion dollars. Yeah, or something. I, I can only do that like one time. He says like I can't oh I can't spend I can't waste four billion dollars every every fight. No, no, you build it one more time, and then really every other enemy yeah. you're fighting, you I'm gigantic. I'm gonna well, destroy. Yeah. Yeah. I can't put it anywhere. Where am I gonna put yeah. it? Yeah, it can't walk around without killing stuff, right? So uh, you park it in. It's uh, really like very practical for that <laughs> right. one purpose. You park it in the desert next to Michael Jackson's robot. You know Michael Jackson's gigantic robot that was gonna like walk through the desert? It's like the size of a building. No. Nope. So we're introducing the rest of the team because like, okay, at least Aaron recognizes that it would be really boring if it was just like Cap, Iron Man, and Thor, and they're like, I'm thinking we'll call Hawkeye and Black <laughs> Widow and Vision. Like, you know they're going to, but right now let's just like set up the the the, the, the coalescing of the teams. And they set up Robbie Reyes, the all new, all different Ghost Rider, mm -hmm. who isn't technically a Ghost Rider. You know, the, normally the Ghost Rider is either like the spirit of vengeance attached to the soul of a rider, or it's an enchanted gas cap that happens to be touched by the half brother of the guy who was the spirit of vengeance. This is yeah, just well, a guy who lights himself on fire and drives thing. around. That's just a psychopath. <laughs> this guy, uh, I think originally it was like the spirit of his evil uncle and then blah, blah, blah. So this guy is just a new ghost rider. Here's the thing, no one cares. And when I say no one, I mean no one at the editorial level because there is a whole explanation for Robbie Reyes and what kind of ghost rider he is and how he's not a ghost rider and what all that all means. Aaron couldn't care less about that. Right. So he's like, no, new ghost rider. Hispanic drives a car, I'm in, I got yeah. it. Flame and Skull, he's ghost rider. He's Wait, ghost rider. I'm gonna, I wanna tell you a couple things about the character so that you know the background so you can incorporate That's, it into your story, right, Jason. Right, right, right. Okay, well tell me. And it's like, okay, and you tell him like, well, he's got like a, he's got a, he's got a half brother and he's sick and it's like, Ooh, pathos. That's all I need to hear. Shut up about everything else. Literally everything else about that character, I don't want to hear. Because, uh, uh, because I want to start telling Ghost Rider stories. Mm. And that's not Ghost Rider. And, that's not, and he is not Ghost Rider. But I also don't want to just use the other Ghost Rider stories because I'm Jason Aaron and I wrote a Ghost Rider book and not a lot of people read that. <laughs> I'm so still bucking. I know, yeah, that no one... I'll is going to read I'll a use, regular Ghost Rider I'll book. use your new stupid Ghost Rider, whatever. Right. I'm not that guy. I'm not going to reach back into the past and arbitrarily pull out a character like, who's you gone. Just, you've been doing that nonstop! <laughs> yeah, yeah, not well, And then Sal Crivelli goes on back issues and complains about how that, that Ghost Rider hasn't been used in 20 years, <laughs> and he just likes him, and that's why he's back, so fine, I'll use your stupid new Ghost Rider. Here's your new Ghost Rider, and I'll just throw away everything about him <laughs> that makes him who he is. And I'll so just he... write him like he's my Ghost Rider. That's it. Yeah. Yes. But no! He's oh, a flaming skull, who cares? Who cares? Who he's cares, just, you nerds? Oh my god. But also he's like, I want to also differentiate that he isn't, you know, like, mm. I'm going to actively ignore certain things about that character 
so that he can fit my mold. But then, when like I get enough tweets about how I'm doing it wrong, I will then take them and then incorporate those into an entire arc about how he's not Ghost Rider. Uh, you guys keep see, calling me Ghost it. Rider, but like I'm not Ghost Rider, and I'm proud of it. There's okay. literally a line Shut up, where Danny. someone says, <laughs> He's not Danny. He's Robbie. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. But like, there's new, literally a line Danny. in his in his Ghost Rider arc where someone says, "You are literally the worst Ghost Rider ever," and he says, "Knowing the Ghost Riders, that is a badge of honor." <laughs> and I'm like, that is simultaneously so funny and a huge middle finger. Yeah, it is. But that's great because, like, hey, at least I can use a pen and stare. No, he can't. No, he doesn't have that. That's a, he's that's not a, ghost that's a ghost rider thing. He's not a ghost rider. Well, at, neither can the other ghost riders can, either. <laughs> well, one of them can. Yeah. <laughs> at least he didn't say jokes on you. I'm not even a ghost rider. Right. <laughs> Except then, <laughs> trick or treat, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a ghost. So, uh, so Robbie's in the book. Robbie keeps getting these like, these, these like voices in his head that are like, you gotta, you gotta be in the Avengers book. And he's like, what? That's not part of my power set. And everyone's like, shut up, Aaron. You don't know anything about this character as power set. What's he set. supposed to do? Drive up a celestial? Yeah. He, he, and punch it. No. He doesn't do that specifically. But he does pilot a celestial. Because of course he does. Because everyone saw Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance and saw that awesome scene where he like drives that thing and like makes it into a hell cycle. So you're like, telling me yeah. that if Robbie Reyes was here mm -hmm. and I'm like, hey, I'll give you a piggyback ride, suddenly I'd be on fire. See, that's my question because like if a Ghost Rider <laughs> can ride a woolly go? mammoth, like how far does it go? Yeah. Right. If I ride you, <laughs> yeah. If he rides you, will you become just a flaming skeleton? I mean, we all wanted Sam Elliott to be riding a flaming horse. Yes. In in the original, the Ghost, Rider original movie. Ghost Rider movie past. Right. So then we can't complain about a bully mammoth flaming Ghost Rider no. or a Ben giving a piggyback ride flaming uh, Mount? Ghost Rider thing. Yeah, but a celestial shouldn't work. Why not? Why? What are because, the limits of Ghost Rider's yeah. abilities? In He's my opinion, magic. if you're a Ghost Rider, you have to have like dominance over that thing. Right, well, there's a dead celestial and he gets inside. Well, if he's piloting he it, yeah. 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 Yeah, he's in his brain pulling levers uh, and shit. Yeah. God well, damn it. not even. He just gets into it. It's actually, we've seen it on, not this show, but on one of our other sister shows. Mm. In a What If book, Iron Man taps into a fallen celestial and so he pilots it. To attack yeah. Thanos yeah, in that What If that. the Fantastic War. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we said it was we, bullshit. <laughs> yeah, well. we've seen it though. Like we've seen it, yep. it maybe in an alternate reality, but we've seen it at least on the page. At and least it was on the page. Okay, yeah. that's right. So, I'll give him that. <laughs> he read that book. No. <laughs> <laughs> but nope. he had that idea he just, like, followed and similar logical listen. thought process. Coincidence backed him up. Yeah. So we also introduce Jen Walters. She's just out for a jog, and she has, does not have the She-Hulk thing under control. So she's not like thin and sexy. She's a Hulk, and she's going by Hulk. Hmm. So she's big and like juiced up, like all the time. Yeah, but in this, no, no, when she's when she's I mean Hulk. in this book. Oh, when she turns when into she Hulk. turns when into She-Hulk, she, Hulk, yeah. she becomes Hulk, and she's big. Is okay. she dumb? Like she can't speak right? Yes. Yep, see, that doesn't work for Jennifer Walters. No, no, and it's like, you know why it doesn't work? And it's not because, like, you made this sexy character into some gross, like, SJW, blah, blah, blah. Like, nah. it doesn't work because that's not who that is. Yeah. I have Hulk. I have four Hulks. <laughs> you don't need to make She-Hulk also Hulk. Like, we have enough Hulks that go, ugh. Part of her character was fun because she was an articulate Hulk. Eh. Well, Hulk's been articulate too, though. Yes, he has. So now she's gonna. Be, now we're gonna flip the script. We're gonna flip the script. Yeah. Yeah. Every and, Hulk can be every version of Hulk. Right. And will be. Why not? Yep. My question to you is why not? Why not everything? I guess because I've already read that, so I don't <laughs> care. Right. Or it's like maybe I didn't read that for a reason. Yeah, but you haven't read it when it's a chick or in an Avengers book. <laughs> also that. Kooka click click booyah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Robbie gets this idea in his head to drive his car into the center of the earth, and so he does. And uh, Doctor Strange. Does the earth become a flaming yeah. ball? Well, now he's, right, he's driving the earth, and it just becomes a flaming crater. <laughs> like, yeah, what is the what is the implication of his ability to, to pilot? There, there's like a fucking steering wheel. You know. And like a display, like a dashboard. Only waiting for a scene where he like drives the moon. So. Robbie gets down there, 
Uh, the, the implication here is that, like, at the center of the Earth, where the Avengers BC uh, dumped that celestial body they thought was dead, well, it turns out that, like, that body was infected by the Horde. Not WoW's Horde, mm. but instead, like, and not the Annihilation Wave. Instead, right. a different... A new Horde. A diff no, 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 an old Horde. What? Remember, these these are old. Yes, these are a million I mean, years old. I mean, new, new to, to everyone else. Universe, yes, absolutely. Yes. This is a Horde of insect creatures that swarm across the galaxy, but aren't Annihilus' Annihilation Wave. You mean like the Brood? Like the Brood, but green and bug-like, and they don't operate like the brood do, where they control your mind and stuff. These are just gross bugs that infected the, the, the celestials back a million years ago. Okay. And that was what, like, addled this celestial and caused the Avengers to fight him and stick him down to the ground. So this celestial has sure. an STD in its body. Yes. And it's going to infect the Earth. Yes. That's so Oh, yeah, it's got crabs. May have already. Yes. Yeah. Yes, these crabs may have already infected the Earth. And so mm. Doctor Strange and Black Panther go down there and they check it out. Uh, Doctor Strange looks nothing like he does in the comics right now because Jason Aaron wrote Doctor Strange and he had this like new whole design which we actually did on the show and other people couldn't change him back fast enough but Aaron didn't like that so he told the artist to draw Doctor Strange the way he looked in his run but not in the run that is currently happening. So She-Hulk changed. Nope. This. Doctor Strange changed. Nope. My thing. Ghost Rider, change. Nope, this. And like, having talked to prominent creators in the industry, I remember, what was it, Jim Zub talked about how like he, when he got into comics, he was like, I wanna, I wanna use this and this and like preserve these characters and like bring this back. And at one point he was trying to break a story and he had, he was like, what, there's almost be a character or thing that like happened that can set up what I'm doing. And his editor was just like, just make something. <laughs> yeah. Who gives a shit? Who cares? Stop trying so hard. Whip something up. So he did, and he created this whole new You're thing. You're a creator. Yeah. Create. Right. So he did. And then, like the next week, he checked the Marvel Wiki, and there was his creation. Now part of the 80-year tapestry. And he was like, oh, this is dangerous. Because I'm kind of addicted to the idea of adding to Marvel now. And you know mm, all of them are. Yeah. Or they're like, yeah, 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 no, 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 Stan and Jack and everything like that. But what about what I made? Right. And now it's just this, this endless chain of irrelevant shit that like everyone is not going to use because you've, you've only contributed to a cycle of constant new stuff that doesn't have staying power because, because you are building on a universe that had for 60 years been built off of the things that came before it. And now you're just adding to it. And like, if your Marvel changes are just Lord. character like <laughs> yes. costumes and designs, mm -hmm. yeah. it doesn't matter. Well, I'm sure they would argue that I don't know, I created a rich backstory yeah. for some of these characters. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's just well, if there's like five people doing that, right. well, nobody's gonna care. It's, it's too much. Yeah, and, and you're also overwhelmed by all these yeah. new characters that yeah. no one's paying attention to and no one's on like the creative side. Reading every single book. Yeah. So okay. that shot of Black Panther looks so huge, I thought it was Venom. Yeah. He is just so jacked. Yeah. And it's like because Ed McGinnis drew him. So they're at the center of the earth. I mean, they're about. So they're uh, not really they're at the center of the earth. They're deep underground. They're deep underground. The atmosphere is different. Like, at least they acknowledge that it's hard. Like, yeah, without the Doctor Strange was buried. It's Robbie that went to the center. The atmosphere is different. Well, you know, it's it's like... But there is an atmosphere. You, you, well, I'm just saying, you can't <laughs> breathe. Like, oh. you know, it's... Doctor Strange is just walking around. Because he has an enchantment on him to protect oh. himself. He even makes a comment to Black Panther where he's like, you know, I was, gonna, I was gonna give you an enchantment, but I see that you don't need one because you're using untold Wakandan technology, I guess. Sure. But yeah. they find all these eggs, and that's part of the right. You know, it's, it's, the it's eggs part of they're, the, they're hatching. They're oh hatching no! Right now. They've yeah. been slumbering for a million years, and now all of a sudden they're waking up. But that's not just convenient; it also is because they they well, feel Ethan, it's a million and uh, two thousand and yeah, right. yeah it's one million, million two thousand eighteen. Yeah, <laughs> damn it! Also, there are dead celestials just falling out of the sky. What? What? Yeah, something's oh. killing all these celestials, and it's like, is it the STD? Were they infected the whole time? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, but it's like I'm like, don't, 
don't start killing the Celestials. Nobody yeah. uses them. Why are you killing all of them? Well, also, why are did. they all having like hanging around Earth? Well, no, they're not. Because Earth well. is the, the linchpin or whatever. Nah, kind of, yeah. I so, get that it's the linchpin, but yeah. that doesn't mean like the every Celestial ever in existence is like, just right over there. They're returning to Earth. Yeah. Well, there's no one through, over there. They're falling through portals, I think. Yeah. There's a shot. You, you can't just have... They're not just sitting all around the Earth and then they just... Bleh. But yeah, they're... They're they're coordinated. It, it, yeah. It's deliberate. It's deliberate. <laughs> so, the you know uh, they call Alpha Flight the uh, not the oh. Canadian super team that involves a Bigfoot, but rather the Earth orbiting space station that is not Sword because that's technically owned by Fox and we don't want to use that right now. No, 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 Alpha Flight, which is headed up by Captain Marvel, who of course was uh, you know the impetus behind Civil War Two and Tony Stark's. Uh, comatose state uh, but you know forget about that because she had a movie coming out and we're really trying to like we pimper we, we really try to pimper but also like we can't help ourselves so every time that they do use Captain Marvel for some reason they make her like the villain or like a monster and you're like what are you doing <laughs> when, when, when they made the Wonder Woman movie they didn't just like all of a sudden come out with all these stories where Wonder Woman's the reason why the Trinity broke up or something like just just yeah. tell bold faced Propaganda stories where she's awesome and everyone's a jerk. Like, don't you no, hate that women? People, that people will call us cocks. <laughs> why are you afraid of that? I don't know. Who cares? People will be like, oh, why is she suddenly so important? Oh, I guess because you're all SJWs. I don't want to be called an SJW. No, it's because oh, she's God, got I'm a movie coming out. And I'm trying to make some money no, off this person. Sal Cavell yells at me about how. Oh, I just anything that's in the movies, we just shove into the comics. Yeah, and that's act the same way. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that that's not. P- pathetic and, and, I, and I will say that, but like yeah. you should still do that. It's still better than making her a villain. It's Are you better than mind? it's better than actively fighting against it. Especially well, because you're not. Like the thing is that they weren't like, oh, I know what we're gonna do. They're gonna say we're gonna get all commercial. We're gonna we're whitewash gonna the script. her. No, like and, and so we're just gonna make her a, a total asshole, and we'll still make bank. Like. No. No, it wasn't a decision. No. It's just, it's just, it's, just, it's actually a lack of decisions. I, I cite that the reason why you hate a lot of things that happen in comics are because of a lack of planning and a lack of foresight. It's just people being like, I don't know. Well, that'd be kind of cool, I guess. Or no one being there and someone going, I have to get this out by this point. Is it cool? <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, well, it's coming out. Those what? Celestials are cool drawings, at least. Those, those are new. Fucking those badass. Are the, oh, those are the, those are the dark Celestials. Oh, the dark Celestials. Yeah, the dark Celestials. Those are the those are the ones that are infected by the Have horde. Have those ever existed before? No. no, they're new. No, but Aaron knows enough because he read the wiki about the Celestials, and now each time they come, it's like a new host. You know, like the first mm. host, the, the eighth host, right. and this is the final host. The this final is the host. dark host. No, 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 no the, the final, final host. host. The dark Celestials come to harbinge the, the final host because, of course, like, I'm taking the Celestials off the board. Are you replacing them with anything interesting or equally valuable? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, they'll come back. Someone else will do something. Like, no, but, like, if they... <laughs> these aren't all the Celestials. Based on, like, no, what... That's all. Based on the last... Five years of Marvel. I am convinced that they have like three editors for like 80 books a month. <laughs> and they just can't keep up. And they can't yeah. keep up. And so like when you have your top writers like Jason Aaron, who is one of their top writers, they just get to do whatever the hell they want. Like, get out of his way. What are you doing? So does this just ha- start happening out of the blue? Yes. Like just they don't build boom, boom. like they kill the celestials and it just happens randomly at like the start of a book. Yes. That's That's, see crazy. why it's so narratively unsatisfying. Yeah. Like the characters that, that everyone's been, been like, how come? How come the Trinity isn't back? It's like, okay, here they are, and they're ready to start the Avengers right now. And it's like, you know, they spent a lot of time making that Avengers Unity Squad. Like Rogue is a major character in the Avengers, not anymore. So God damn it, they're working out how to get the Avengers back together. No, no, no. They talked about it for a second. Oh yeah, the right. last second. The Celestials start falling out of the sky. So like Avengers assemble. Yeah. Who? Who? The three of them. <laughs> Literally and? the three of them. Oh, well, you see, because... And I, and I'll, uh, I'll grant you this. Who's in earshot? Avengers Assemble! Whoever comes huh? running is on the team. Well, we were in a bar talking about it, I guess. I guess, so, I guess us. Yeah. Oh, Jennifer Walters is there, and uh, we'll have Robbie Reyes, no, 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 and uh, Bob on the corner who sells yeah. magazines. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> no, they... Those are the... We're, we're new Avengers-ing it up, where it's like... 
there there came a day unlike any other. I'm embracing the mantra of the Avengers, where right. no single hero could could face it. And so, you know, it, not unlike New Avengers, which you know, I would be called a hypocrite if I wasn't like they did the exact same thing in New Avengers, mm. where it's just like clandestinely this con th this confederacy of characters showed up at once and that's the team this is everyone who responded to the celestials now that being said if the if the almost gods of the universe fell out of the sky every single goddamn superhero exactly. on earth yes. would be an adventure right now and yes. but like, instead some of the supervillains would probably join up <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Doctor Doom's like, I'm in. Right. Like, except even he is like, I don't even know if he's in, if he's Iron Man right now. It doesn't matter. The point is like, everyone would show up. But for some reason, Cap, Iron Man, Thor, they call off a flight. She Only Captain Marvel shows up. So she's on the team too. Yay. Oh, she also has a movie. Sweet. And uh, clandestinely, She-Hulk hooks up with Robbie Reyes, because the two of them were around the same place at the same time. Uh-huh. So and they, she needed a ride. So she and he fight the, 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 the Horde. Oh. While they're doing that, of course, Doctor Strange and Black Panther were investigating the in eggs. In the center of the Earth. Yes. Yeah. So they're on the... So that's everyone on the cover Wait, is in the Avengers now. So the Horde already, like... Some of the Horde already escaped. Yes. And then that's when Doctor Strange and Black Panther are also already in the center of the universe discovering the, the Earth. Yeah, yeah. The center of the Earth. Right. Well, the, the Earth. Uh, well, the center of the universe. universe. <laughs> anyway. Apparently Might we're the well fucking be. linchpin. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that, that's, that's yeah, fine. Been happening. They did it in DC. They're doing yeah. it in Marvel. I, I have no complaint about that. I'm not going to be the one who says, like, how come Earth's the center of everyone's friggin' reality? Because that's us, man. Because we're writing this. Because we be write so, the book. That'd be so dumb. That'd be so, like, arbitrarily dumb if they were like, the center of the universe is Mars. Well, there is no center of the universe. Oh, like, I there's know. no place that's like... Th 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 when yeah, you look the out in the sky of... and you see millions of stars, you shouldn't think, we're... I guess we're in the middle of all of it. Right? Like, no, that's the wrong lesson. The yeah. lesson is, like, there's a million places and they all think they're the center of all of it. So, like, none of us are. Yeah. Well, also, isn't the universe ever expanding? Like, there is never an, a middle. Yeah, I don't think you could get to the middle. I don't no, it's a concept that makes any sense. Right. So then the dark celestials show up, and they're like, ah, and then they're like, okay, let's fight them. And it's like, well, you're dead. You're dead. You're dead. It's oh, over. Well, you're you dead. Lost. You're no. But they do anyway, and somehow they don't all die. And uh, you know, and so they, they. What do they talk to us? No, no, no. So the the, the Avengers form, so more or less. So, you know, like She Hulk and, and Robbie, they fight for a few minutes, and then they're mates. And then they all go on, and uh, you know, so so uh, they they eventually team up with the rest of the Avengers, so you can get yeah. the whole team together. Oh, hey, you're fighting them too? Cool. Let's all Come punch them at here. the same time. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll work. Mm -hmm. And of course, like we made Jen Walters She-Hulk into like Savage Hulk, kind of because we want to extend sequences. Like it's not enough that like She-Hulk would be like, "Hey, who are you? Like you're you look like a Ghost Rider," you know. She's like, bah, flaming car man. Bah. She, like, she fights him and he's like, whoa, 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 it's going to be cool. Hey, cool down. Uh, you know, to extend it, make it a little more fun. Oh, look at them fighting. Right. Uh, you know, arbitrarily. So they have to fight multiple dark celestials, mm -hmm. but also, who are coming from the sky, but also the, the host monsters oh, I'm sorry. coming up from the ground. Yes. And this is their first adventure as these new formation of the Avengers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, then it's revealed that the reason why the Dark Celestials are even here and why the ho and why the Horde has awoken may in fact be because of Loki. Hmm. That Loki manipulated them into coming here and correcting a mistake. Loki. What? Yes. Manipulated Celestials. The old Dark Celestials. So you know, right. maybe they're more easily manipulated. But, I like, see. You know, it, it, but it's, that's Aaron being like, remember the formation of the Avengers? Plus Loki's really popular and he's going to be in that movie. So like, you know, it's, 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 I'm doing some, some legwork for them, but also I'm paying homage to classic Avengers. Like the classic Avengers is Captain America was not a founding Avenger, you know, in the beginning of the book because he hadn't been thought out yet. But, but, but for as far as culturally speaking, everybody knows he is. So look, it's like an homage to classic Avengers. Like they're being formed by Loki. What Again. is the connection okay. between the 1 million BC Avengers, mm -hmm. the pre-Avengers? Yes. And, and this? And this. Oh, just the, the, well, just they, the fact that there was the a celestial, celestial on the ground? ground. Yes. yes. I'm setting up the fact that like there was a, you know, there was, there was the BC like Avengers. The celestials have a grudge against 
Well, o- no, they, Odin. No, and that team no. or shit like that. No, but they do explain that like the 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 deeds that were done then were sowing the seeds of where we are now. Because Loki, essentially, like you know, kind of tricking the Celestials, the Dark Celestials being here, feels like a really shoehorned in move. <laughs> Yes, but it's also... Like, you always need him to be, like, a little, like, worm on someone's shoulder whispering in their ear, like, yeah, I'm gonna get in there and tell you new stuff. He is overused by this point. So Loki's there, and he's getting the Dark Celestials to attack Earth. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Carol has this, like, bomb that she'll use that'll, like, transport them away. The idea is that, you know, like, well, I had to come up with eventualities for everything. Celestials are one of them. Uh, so she has this thing that looks like something you'd get in an army supply shop, mm-hmm. but apparently is actually like a bomb that will tr- that will teleport straight up celestials. Uh, so they're gonna use it, and Loki shows up. He's like, "No, you don't, no." Nah. And then Cap basically whips his shield at it and activates the bomb, sacrificing himself and. You know, getting rid of Loki and seemingly the Dark Celestial. Uh, Where does it send him? Into the center of the sun. Oh. Yikes. Yeah. Good plan. It was a pretty good plan. Yeah. It's like, if I gotta kill a Celestial, I guess I'll throw it into the heart of a star. I mean, a black hole would be better. I think so too, but, you know, we needed it to be a place... We don't have one of those close by. It needed to be a place they could escape from. You know, Captain America's went into the center. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're not gonna kill Captain America in this book. Well, he is Although, in the center of the well sun. Everything so he should be dead. Yeah, but you know, there's there's, there's like a bubble. No, yeah. but Loki, because there's a oh Loki's Loki for, creates an enchantment that protects them. I assumed it be, it's because they were around a celestial, and celestial has like its own like gravity, its own, yeah, atmosphere, and, and oh. gravity. Yeah, no. no, that would be cool. I like that idea because I like the idea of them being like so big that they're like they have their own cra- gravity. Could live on them. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. they don't appear to be that large. No, but like, well, they or you just get inside of it. Yeah, yeah, you live there. Yeah. Which they end up doing at the end. At the end, it's they, like a big spaceship. At the end, of course, the Avengers do set up shop in the Arctic with a it, within oh, the, the body of a dead celestial. Book. Yeah, that's where which this, is that's like how so this relatable happens. and fun. I love the Avengers being having their headquarters in the body of a dead well, celestial. Remember that movie where there's the head of a dead celestial yes. and there's like a thriving metropolis. Yeah, inside that of was it? that was a cool and it's a whole thing like in one movie. City. Yeah, no, now it's a now it's a, a linchpin of the Avengers. Yep. Well, as if to constantly remind you, even no matter how far we go away from this plot, that this is the plot. <laughs> like, we will be getting back to this. Even if I did set this up in 2018. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, constantly reminding you, don't forget about that celestial thing. Because that's a big deal. Yeah. So now they think they just have to deal with the bug monsters, I guess. Yeah. Well, and, the and any remaining celestials that might have shown up. Thank God yeah, the maybe this one. leader yeah. Grim he's Celestial a... has a hood and a scythe. Yeah, he's the way you know awesome. he's like totally dope and awesome and scary and bad. Yeah. He's got to have a visual that makes him look bad. I mean, I'm not going to begrudge them making, making the bad guys look like bad guys. I'm going to begrudge them making it look like death. Well, I mean, it is. Yeah. If, if celestials set foot on Earth, you're not walking away. Well, like, that's interesting. They are you shouldn't. Yeah. A bunch of them crashed onto Earth, and now we have a whole lot more. Well, no one's ever done that before. No one's ever been like, I'm going to kill all the Celestials. Lol. They come up with a plan where Thor's like, I think my dad might know something about this, because he's like a million years old. So Thor and She-Hulk go visit Odin in old Asgard, where they're like, come on, Dad, spill it. And he's like, oh, the answer, that you, the answer to what you seek lies behind this door, and the door is behind, like, ice. And so... You know, Thor and She-Hulk use their combined badassery to break through it, uh, to get to the the thing. Uh-huh. Oh, ice! Yeah, not mystical ice. I mean, it's, it's mystical ice. They're at old Asgard. It ain't gonna be regular ice. They end up arriving at this like egg-shaped MacGuffin, Ymir's Tears, I believe. Uh, and Ymir is a uh, is a frost giant, I believe. Oh. Um, There's also some Eternals here. Oh, we'll get to that. Oh. But uh, Thor and She-Hulk get Ymir's Tears, which is like, uh, you know, a power-up. If you crack it open and eat it, it'll, it'll give you power-up. And uh, to fight Celestials. Oh, of course. So, um, but Thor succumbs to the, to the cold. So he's not nearly as badass as She-Hulk is. So then she smooches him and transmits some of her radiation heat to him thereby like warming him back up oh. and fanning the flames of their passion for each other. And they were setting up like, hey, 
you know, since like, you know, Thor never really found She-Hulk attractive until she was like a warrior person kind of. Thing. Oh. So now they're gonna like carry on a little a little romance. Between That's the weird. Two Why was he ever attracted to Jane Foster? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it takes different strokes, I guess. But the point is, is they, they... I'm allowed to change or whatever. Yeah, but so they I wasn't trying to her because she was a lawyer. Right. But then I just got over it. Well, he didn't know anything about her being a lawyer. <laughs> he probably does. And, and, you know, so they, they hook up. And, right. Uh, and they keep making out throughout the book. Oh. Uh, and then they'll, they'll, they'll set up later that, like, you know, Jen, Walters, and Thor have nothing to talk about. Like, their uh, yeah, relationship no is purely physical. Sure. Oh, and I thought but physical, you meant, like, because they beat things up. Well, that, that too. You know, yeah, they're like, yeah, also. we're having a great time, but, like, when I'm not that, what are we going to talk about? Right. You know, and you're like, oh, that's that's fair and interesting. Meanwhile... Uh, I mean, we're still going to bang, though, right? Oh, yeah, totally. Well, that's what their so, relationship is based on. Iron Man and his crew are like, wait a minute. There's an entire team of Marvel characters who are intrinsically connected to the Celestials, aren't there? I think they're called the Eternals, and they have a movie coming out in a couple of years. Yeah. So let's let's go meet with them and ask them what's up. They're all dead. Aaron kills all the Eternals. What? They all died. How the they... Horde? No, they killed themselves. We have to stop. <laughs> this book sucks. What? They killed themselves when they when the truth of their origins were revealed to them. What? Yup. That's that's what awful. And, and we're well, we haven't found out what the truth of their origin is yet. No. So you can't say that you don't know. Maybe yeah, you don't know how awesome it could be. Yeah. But awesome. What, what sounds tragic? What, to me. Awesomely what's, horrible. Yeah, yeah. What sucks is you just kill the Eternals. First of all, within their name, you can't kill the Eternals. Secondly... You also killed the Celestials. Well, yeah. yeah. Maybe they... I thought they were going to have killed themselves because the Celestials died. Right. And they were like, no. No. Yeah, they because, felt their pain. Because they, they learned... Tied together. Yeah, yeah. They learned a secret about, like, everything. Um, oh. and, uh, and so they killed themselves. Or each other. It's, it's, it's vague, and they say that it could be both. But Icarus... The leader of the Eternals team, not the I'm, leader of the entire I'm race. He's still alive he a is little bit. <laughs> to give you a little information about how oh, to beat yeah. this problem. He said the truth tore us apart. Yep. So Icarus. Uh, and rather than like splitting up the team, we decided to, to kill, kill ourselves. each other. Yes. Yeah. Now, that being said. Uh, Maybe that's like uh, Cap and Iron Man in uh, Civil oh, War. Only, yeah, we had Iron a whole Man finds War. out the truth. Yeah, in about the movie. his parents. In we'll the movie, do this off panel. Though. We don't want to bore. Yeah, we don't want to bore you with the the civil war of the Eternals. That would be really boring. Yeah, I'll tell you that stupid. in another story. Yeah, Maybe no. we'll go back to it. Maybe we, no one ever will. Probably not. Probably not though. What, but I'm like, you're gonna set up this whole thing with the Eternals in the movies. Like, why wouldn't you have a book? Why'd you kill them all? And I know it's because he wants to bring them back, but it's like, yeah. but, it's, but don't worry, they'll come back. But it's just like so no, obnoxious. I'm yeah. gonna bring them back, and they'll be Jason Aaron's Eternals. <laughs> well, that that's not that's not too far off. Well, but like, if you kill someone, and I just know they're coming back. It's just lame. Right? Like, then like, why'd you do it in the first place? Yeah. Like, who cares? Like, yeah, that, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, the now, death doesn't matter. If you recall, in Neil Gaiman's Eternals, which was kind of like the basis for the movie, and is also yeah. the basis for anyone's context for friggin' the Eternals, yeah. because it's the only story that really involves them and well, how they started in history. There's a, there's a ton of Eternal stories, but they're all old. Not they're all old. old. Yeah, but that's uh, the new relevant. Eternals. And even then, it was kind of boring. Yeah, they were old and busted. This is the new hotness. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. New hotness. But uh, the the Eternals can come back from this. Like you can just put them in a pod and they'll right. Run. They'll do the pod thing. That's right. Yeah. But uh, for some reason, and and for some reason, you're like, oh no. Right. Like, okay. Plus, if they know that, then why did they even bother to kill each other? It's very, it's very uh, it, dramatic. Is it like a yeah. is it like jerking off? It's, it's what just they like, do. I gotta get it out of my system. Uh, oh no, yeah. we're all upset. Well, let's kill ourselves. Let's kill each other. Yeah. Be in pods. Yeah, like what? So anyway, Icarus. Uh, it's in, like it's like working off a really bad bender. Right. Like instead of you know waking up in the morning and having like you know a greasy breakfast, mm -hmm. you kill yourself instead. <laughs> you kill yourself. Oh, well, you know that you, that way you can start over. You I would guy. rather just come back from a pod than <laughs> yes. keep living like this. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta shave after that. I gotta clean. My, I soiled myself. Yeah. I'd rather just just restart. So because the Eternals have a thing they can do to help prevent the Celestials from destroying everything. Aaron killed them so they can't do it. Yeah. But oh. Icarus dies right after he imparts the knowledge to be able to do it so the Avengers can do it since this is an Avengers book. 
and that's the Unimind. A thing that only Eternals can do, but the Eternals teach Tony Stark how to do it, so at the end of the story, Tony Stark can be like, we gotta use the Unimind that I learned from the dying Icarus that'll be able to make the, the Celestials go away. And it's like, that's a power they have, man. Like, <laughs> y- no, it's knowledge. No, no y- right. It's a technique. Yeah, you it's thought like it was Vulcan a power, but it wasn't. Like, no, anyone can do it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you could argue he puts, he touches him. Yeah. Maybe he transfers the ability to do the Unimind into. I believe Stark. Stark makes some point of saying that he only transferred the knowledge to do it. Oh. But he does physically touch Iron Man's helmet. <laughs> well, maybe maybe his his mask is off, so maybe a little bit of his finger brushed his face. <laughs> His beloved finger. His finger, yeah, it's glove. He could transfer knowledge through uh, his helmets and stuff. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, and, and the glove is like, you know, one of those touchscreen gloves. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if Icarus even has the power to touch someone and impart anything. Except for, like, residual warmth. Anyway, so now they have the secret. But, like, Stark has to parse it and figure it all out, and it won't be able to be unleashed until the end of the story. Sure. Just enough time. I was going to be working in my lab this entire time. No, 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 no. He's part of it. He's with the team. He's like, let's fight him. It's just a whole bunch of pointless, like, yelling and posturing. Yeah. And cool drawings. (laughs) Meanwhile, in the center of the sun, Loki's like, let me explain to you my nefarious scheme. Okay. Basically, Loki learned the secret of... Humanity, the universe, uh, superpowers, that kind of thing. And the idea was that like a million years ago, there's the horde. The horde infected celestials. It was a big, be- it was a big deal. And when it infected them, it like it's like a thing that could kill celestials. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, but it was also like a disease. So it's more like space crabs. The, the celestials got super space crabs, and uh, and it's like transferring between the celestials. And one of them, who was so addled by it, he clandestinely landed on Earth, and he like shat himself and puked all over the primordial ooze that would become the catalyst for life on Earth. And like, the excrement and vomit that blasted out of this dying celestial mixed with it to allow for the formation of mutants, superpowers. That is disgusting. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. That's... That's how superheroes became, came about. That's how. That's how from the, the, the that's the how, disgusting visceral fluids. Yeah. Yes, like the the, the that's phlegm. How, that's how mutants and anyone with powers. What how about, powers alla- are allowed in the Marvel universe? Well, what about um, yeah? What about scrolls? What about Inhumans? Yeah, they in, came from from Kree experimentation. From Kree experimentation. Yes. Yeah, uh, I assume. Well, they used something as a basis, and that was oh, man. This is this yeah. is not a million years ago. This was. Four well, billion years ago. This is four ago. billion years ago. This is when, when man was nothing. When right. nothing, life was nothing. So the, at the I origin still found of Earth, life. Though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. So, so if, like, it's the single celled life forms that originally evolved on Earth had within them yes. the like. The, the, uh, the celestial of... phlegm and vomit. Right. Dude, the single celled organisms back then like had wars and like, you know, <laughs> used powers. Yeah. Uh, just, it was just on a very small scale. Just something encoded just, in their DNA. Yep. That, it's just, uh, you know what it was? Aaron was like, you know, what's a, you know what my favorite alien movie is? Prometheus. <laughs> yeah. The worst one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. You know, the thing that ruins everything. Yeah, the goo. Yeah, the goo. It's the Prometheus goo. Wow. And he's infected, right, with the horde. Yes. So like so the horde how come this infection didn't happen? is like part of us yes. too. Yeah. So how come this didn't happen to like the other celestial that came to Earth that the the Prevengers fought? And so then a million years ago, the Celestials came to like okay. find to their find lover, this one that died. like their oh. you know their, that, that one who got who got sick. Oh, and then they oh. fought the Celestials off. Yes. Oh. Okay. And they fought like the love of the Celestials, and then like they defeated them and they threw them and they, you know. They threw them away, and then they left. So now there's two Celestials on Earth. The one that died, that died. here of disease four billion years ago, and the one that was defeated by the Pre-Avengers a million years ago. Yeah. Who was the lover of the first one. Yes. Cool. So somehow Loki found that out. So Loki, so Loki learns the secrets, and so then he's like, oh, well, like, and he has basically like a crisis of faith, where he's just like, oh my god, like everything came from the butthole of some rando Celestial who got sick? Including you, Loki. Yeah, that's what he's saying. And so he's like, he became disillusioned. And so he's like, I'm going to bring the Dark Celestials here to end this mistake. The mistake <laughs> is life. Like, all of this is a mistake. So that's why the Eternals kill themselves. They're like, 
We're what? We're bile and poo? Whoa. <laughs> they did defeat. Odin did defeat the lover of the first Celestial. Yes. Who was lovesick and grieve stricken yes. to find the the horde ridden corpse of its lover yep. and then Odin beat the shit beat out it of it yep. and shoved it deep inside the earth. Yes. <sighs> there you go. Okay. Weird and unnecessarily friggin' complicated. Right. Uh, and that was called uh, Zagreb the Aspirant. Yeah, they have names. That's the second one that came. Yeah. They all have but, fun names. I do like them, but like I'm not going to bother to remember them all. Yeah, and then that one... Zagreb. Zagreb didn't die. It got infected, but it didn't die. Yes. It got converted into... A, a host-ridden celestial or a dark celestial. A dark celestial. Yes. After Loki explains that to Cap, Cap doesn't have any... Like He's just like, well, it doesn't matter where we come from. It's where we're going, punch! And I'm like, that's very... It's very trite. Like you <laughs> take all the information you gave me and throw it away, because I don't care. I mean, like, he could say something like, you, you know, you're, you're lying, or he could be like, who cares? Or he could be like, I, I you know, I, I've never caught any of this nonsense, or, you know. But, like, instead he's just like, oh, look, I've got an impassioned speech. No, I'm a super soldier. I didn't come from that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, everything did, man. Like, so. You're human. I, you still came from it. Yeah, so you got this whole, like, reveal, right? This yeah. is where it all. This is where it was, this is where it's all going. Right. So the Dark Celestials under the... Like nudging of Loki are going to unmake this mistake. We're going to kill all life on Earth. Oh. That's the plan. And so the Avengers are like, oh, no, you don't. Uh, so okay. ultimately, you know, like uh, the, the, the Avengers regroup. Robbie has this whole thing. I don't want to get into it. But when She-Hulk and Thor meet up with the rest of the team, they're like, yeah, we got this egg. Which is a tear. Oh yeah, the tear of yeah, the, the frost, frost giant, giant yeah. leader or whatever. So then she and she, so then she Hulk and Thor share it. They eat it, and then they while making out, of course. No, no. <laughs> yeah, they share each other's gum, or the superhero equivalent thereof. They shove pieces of the egg in each other's face. No, they're feeding it's like a each wedding other cake. like a wedding cake. Yeah. yeah, gross. So they, they, they. Hey, hey, guys, can we get some of that tear? No, <laughs> it's just enough for the two of us. So then they eat it, and then they grow to the size of Celestial, so we can have a Power Rangers fight. No. <laughs> but listen, a frost giant is not as big as a Celestial. No, but no, that's but the, the only. But if you eat their makes... tear, yeah. yeah, you will be. But you yes. take a frost giant tear and you mix it with a Hulk or a Thor, and you get giant. You get giant thing. motherfucking temporarily huge awesomeness. And so now you got them, but that's only two. And there's like, there's like, what about the rest of the Avengers? Yeah, there's like five of these of these giant celestial, yeah, yeah. dark so then celestials. Robbie, he jumps into the body of one of the falling celestials, oh, yeah. and, and he, he becomes manipulating it like a grotesque macabre puppet. Yes, like a like a skin puppet. And so he manipulates that thing because he's riding that. So you now you got a a ghost rider celestial. Oh yeah, that's and worth like two dark celestials. Totally. And then uh, Iron Man, you know, he oh, enacts he's got his, his Iron Man celestial. Yeah. So they all punch the celestials and. The... So they just become big and win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. And the like countless. What's the point of the whole? Millions horde? of lives are no, lost. No, no, no. They in go to battle. Russia, where it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There's a big bunch of, there's a big chunk of Russia that's just... This, yeah, it's there in Siberia. There's only a few scattered houses. Yeah. If if I've learned anything from the movie Justice League, there's only like four houses, and if you just drag them out of the way, they're going to be fine. <laughs> Who cares if their land gets damaged or, well, you know, well, or radiation leaks yeah, all over it's it? It's like garbage land anyway. Uh, yeah. Of course, the, the host was awakened... You know, as, as per Doctor Strange and Black Panther. So Captain America and Captain Marvel and Doctor Strange and Black Panther, they could fight the bug monsters. Yeah, they fight a few bug monsters on the ground and uh -huh. Cap pretends like he's leading anyone. <laughs> Meanwhile, four giant tower-sized people do the real fighting against the Celestials. Yes. No, Ethan, it was the infection from within that started it all. So really, Cap is... What? No, he didn't start there. He's just from the. He just he was just in the sun for a few minutes. It's like we've got them right where we want them. Dominate Avengers and like Thor is like hearing this like little like. Yeah, we got them where we want them. <laughs> he hears nothing. 
Because when Robbie says, like, let's kick some ass and take shit over, <laughs> Iron Man shows up. He's like, I think they heard you all the way in Poughkeepsie. You know, because he's so loud. Because he's so like, big. Because he's so yeah. goddamn big. Hey, where's uh, Galactus? He is not here. I think he's like, that looks stupid. I'm not going to be part of that. I think at this point he may... No, he's not the life bringer anymore. Uh, Galactus is going through his own shit right now. <laughs> In another corner he's of the got galaxy. got a lot of crap going on. Ah. <laughs> I just got Reed Richards is just like, he's got his finger on the ultimate hellfire. Yeah, where's, like, where's the ultimate I'm gonna hellfire? Do it. I'm going to do it. Reed's not here. Reed's, Reed's in another Reed. Remember that time when Galactus came to Earth and, and that Reed was Richards the biggest fucking didn't thing? didn't fucking punch him in the face. He used like trickery to defeat him. <laughs> yeah, good old human, human gumption. Yeah, well now we got five or four. I don't even know how many friggin' giant dark four. celestials and we're going to beat him by punching him straight it's in the face. Good. I'm going to kick this dark celestial in the nards. <laughs> And it's gonna make a hilarious cartoon honking Sweet. sound. I'm gonna do that giant. Oh, what? <laughs> boom! Yeah. Right in the nuts. Let's do the old cock knocker. Like, and yeah. because I'm so huge, it took like uh. 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got rockets on it because it's the fucking because oh, yes. Pacific fucking rim now. <laughs> Yeah, it's got like a little rocket under yeah. the elbow to just like <laughs> propel his fist into. Yeah. Or it's a it's an Iron Man suit, so it'll be repulsors. Naturally, yeah. not rockets. No, yeah. That's like that's like old school. Yeah. Sweet. So I can't they, wait for the movie version of this. Oh yeah, that's gonna be really cool. Are you telling me that at some point, Small Hulk doesn't just call down a giant hammer to crush a celestial? Right. You said Hulk. I'm sorry, Thor. Thor's huge too. Oh no, yeah, no, he like, should be calling down huge hammers. I agree. Not only that, but like, no, he can be any size and call down any size hammer he wants. Well, Thor can't be. Thor big. should just call down. No, sure, Thor should just call down like a massive hammer yeah, to kill I want yeah. like all yeah. the all the hammers or the biggest hammers ever. Yeah. Yeah. I want a hammer the size of Mount Everest to come down. Yeah. Like right the there, still in the face. There's no reason not to do that if that's See, his fucking power. No, man, that's too much. Awesome. It Why is, does the this... egg make Thor's hammer big? <laughs> Or his armor. Or his armor. Or his clothes. Why is he naked? He should it's be magic. naked. The magic understands. Oh, it's a mag. Yeah. Well, that's like saying She-Hulk should be entirely naked because she's well, yeah, yeah, both of them should be yeah. naked. Yeah. All yeah, their clothes should have be been off. destroyed. No. Yes. No. I'm not drawing the, that. No. The, 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 no. The, the magic understands. No, I can't draw that because if you have giant Thor and giant She-Hulk, they're just going to bang they're all gonna, over the corners yeah. of the earth. They'll crack the earth in half from their, from their fucking... I'm just too... You're just so sexy, I can't not. Yeah, they just bang, and the, and the Dark Souls just, just go, ugh. And then they leave. <laughs> and then they leave. No, like, and then I'm like done. the Eternals, they kill themselves. Yeah. There you go. You know, they punch them a lot, and then yeah. they're like, wait a minute, we gotta get rid of them. And so uh, so then, uh, you know, and of course, like, the the, the, the tears wear off on uh, on Hulk and Thor, and uh, and Robbie can't pile the thing anymore because it's convenient. And then Iron Man's like, oh, right, the deus ex machina that I was given by the dead guy. And so they all have to join hands, they sing Kumbaya, and the and Dark Celestials go away. Sweet. Because they use the Unimind. How do they defeat Loki? Uh, they, they like, they, they punch him. I, I think they rip the mask off of him, and he turns out to be old man Higgins. <laughs> uh, it's not it's not that well you know it his his plan is quite diabolical because they spring into action like a cheat on a trampoline and uh as they as they as they as they assemble loki cackles to himself and says welcome back avengers as though that were the plan the entire time where it's like no loki was like oh that's that is the truth and i'm tricking them into thinking that i'm like upset by it and want to kill the earth but really i wanted to do this to to goad the Avengers into reforming so that they can solve the problem because of course the like the the, the mental gymnastics they do about this is that no like because er, of course like this isn't the first or the last time that the Celestials came to Earth and like seeded and did like experiments right like so you know the the, the first Celestial like he 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 he, he gooed, gooed everywhere he gooed all over the Earth and made these people but the Celestials were like we're gonna keep life here and let it grow and continue because since he was sick with the horde he has seeded the life of humanity with the antibodies to the horde that perhaps they that like there is a purpose to the to life to people on Earth. yeah that they were built to fight against this you know billion year threat 
of the horde. If that made sense, then if you touched a horde yeah. thing, it should probably like wither up and explode right. or die or, or something. Or you could like War of the Worlds it, where it's like if they were to interact with any kind of human or person on this planet, Is it because we're the antibodies because we're small and we can just fight it yeah. like a white blood cell would? Yeah, that's what they're doing, yeah. Isn't that kind of fun? Like, eh. We're the antibodies. We're fighting off the infection. We're literally fighting the infection. Like, on a planetary scale, you know the little bugs. They look like they look like viruses or or or, or bacterium. So like we're literally fighting them. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what happens at the end of this book. It doesn't make any sense. Right. He says like, oh, we're gonna use the Unimind, and they're like, yeah. yeah, it's time to save the world. Yep. All right. And then the Iron Man says, ha, huh, it worked. <laughs> like, but all I see is a picture of Robbie surrounded by bugs. Yeah. What worked? What did you do? You mind? <laughs> I guess they killed all the bugs outside of the celestials. Yes. And but now the dark celestials, they're still there. Yes. They have the and bugs still inside dark. them. Right. And so they're like, the fight's not over. Yep. What? You might say it grinds to a halt. Oh, good. Robbie says, Cass yells, "Avengers assemble!" So we're right again. Yeah. Robbie says, "So we're right back where we started. Still trying to defeat the final host." Yeah. And then Cap says, "Avengers assemble," and then they punch. And then them. we get some narration. And we see one of them getting punched. Yeah. No, they get, they, they're punched all throughout this page and that page. Well, and then they say things like, the guardian of the nexus of all realities rumbles back to his swamp. Yeah. So I guess he goes away. He leaves. The pillars of Adelan shake as Black Bolt sighs in relief. Yeah. Odin what? smiles. In Wakanda, they cheer in the streets and praise their panther king. Yeah. In the temples of Khonshu... The bloody moon priests return to their prayers. Life just goes back to normal because they punched a celestial And as the, the dark face. celestials yeah. fall around him and the chains of Siderite grip him ever tighter, the prince of... So it just describes how they win. Yes. We and ran out of pages. Very briefly shows a couple scenes of people being punched, of dark celestials being punched. Yes. I guess by the old celestials are getting up and walking around. Right? Yeah. Except like, What? Because they weren't dead, they just were infected. They just, just infected, yeah. Yeah, so we, we fixed them. Yes. So by I guess using the Unimind. The combined, by using the Unimind. So the combined powers of the regular Celestials plus the Avengers easily defeat the Dark Celestials. Yes. So the Unimind wakes up the Celestials? Well, it kills, it kills the, the Horde, which then, which then breaks their, their thrall. Yeah. Of them. It destroys you know, they, the infection. Right. But not of the Dark Celestials. No, they were too firmly entrenched. Yes. They've been sick for millions of years. Or billions of years? I don't know. A while. A while. They've been sick for a while. They yeah. never used the shampoo. No. Right. Yeah. Or a little comb. Right. So. So that's it. Right? And it was like, after this, I'm like, well, I'll just wait until Aaron's done. Yeah. No, that's fair. Like, I, I don't care about anyone on this team much less their interactions with each other because you know based on the bar scene of the Trinity talking about like, look at us, it's it's Hydra Cap and Comatoni and Unworthy Thor all hanging out. Like you know the whole thing's a reaction yeah. to the audience's reaction to yep. the status quo changes. So you know hey, we'll just get back to normal like nothing happened. Don't you want that? Isn't that what you want? Right. Don't don't you love the Marvel universe because nothing ever changes and there is no reference to previous continuity. And there's no plan? Like, so clearly there's no plan? Yeah. Like, we right. made these huge changes and then just decided, like, ah, nah, just put them back. Yeah. Jason and Aaron took a couple of fever dreams he had <laughs> and decided, like, it would make a good story. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll write a story around those images. It's cool looking. I think I could completely upend the Celestials and Eternals yeah. and all that. I think I could, I think I I could, could do pull that, that to off. To justify reforming the Avengers worse than the last time these Avengers were reformed. Because there is, like, you get the new Avengers, then this is like, ah, fuck them. Like, get rid of the old Avengers. And then he runs that, and then he creates the Mighty Avengers during the Civil War split, where it's like, so there's some people who don't want to see Spider-Man on the team. So they made the Mighty Avengers, which is more like classic Avengers, but still with this, like, whole, you know, Civil War angle. And then that whole thing ended. You know, Norman Osborn, Dark Reign, you know, we got to make everybody go back to the way they were. And then he starts the Heroic Age, where Cap... Iron Man and Thor reform the Avengers after having a really dark period right. where they all didn't like each other. Maybe this would be kitschy. Mm. But but I've kitschy at best. I've <laughs> seen it done, and I've seen it done better. 
and with less flagrant disregard for everything. Yeah. And it's like, no. Does Steve Rogers go back to being hydrocap? No. Does, does is, is 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 the Earth destroyed? And everyone's got to move to the moon? No. Like, but like, you didn't destroy everything. It, it's a, it's. I'm using a hyperbolic example to say like, when you kill the gods of the universe, and when you destroy an entire team whose sole purpose is to justify their existence in the first, <laughs> and place, they're tied to them. Yeah. Yeah. You're kill. You're just. You're you're wrecking everything. Because it's like metaphorically Yeah, but most everything. people thought that stuff was stupid and lame anyway. Well, then why not make it cool as opposed to just killing it? No, it's easier if, it just, if I just put it away. Yeah. Well, it's an easy way to show how badass my team is if I have them defeat the most powerful beings ever galaxy. created by no. Jack Kirby. <laughs> no. It's part of the grand tradition of gigantic events that don't matter. Yeah, and this isn't even and an event. play fast this and loose. This is a story yeah. arc. Yeah. It should be, though. Right. It really needs to be, and it's not. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's no time for Too that. Too bad. You can't have the Celestials die. Yeah. yeah and no. the Eternals, I guess. Yep, yep. Especially with the Eternals coming out. I know. I know. That, that and not have it be some baffling. big thing. It's just like, it, well, happened, if it I, happened over there. If yeah. I hadn't killed the Eternals, then you'd be wondering why I wasn't using the Eternals in this story. See, I am thinking about continuity. Like, yes, the Eternals would obviously be involved in this. So they had to be killed. So they See, had to die. I'm yeah. thinking it through. And that's why they had to die. Right, it's like you, this whole thing came about because of No Surrender, which was a story where literally every popular character was put into a stasis bubble so that they could get out of the way so the characters they wanted to write about could take over. Yeah. Like, you, you have story structure in place to make, like, yeah, how but about this? They already did stasis bubble, I can't do that. Oh, so I'll just kill them. What about like Dark Celestials? Capturing the Eternals. What about Loki walling off their city? Like, what about anything? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, nah, they killed themselves. Hell, you could wall off the city. Icarus is the one who barely makes it out, almost dies, touches Tony, and transfers the new Yunmon information. You know? Or they have to keep uh, you gotta kill Icarus somebody? alive. And, like, he doesn't have the rest of the Eternals, so, like, take, using the Unimind is going to take a lot longer with people that aren't the Eternals. Right. But Icarus does it. Yeah, yeah, then when you can actually mm. make him matter. Yeah, but he's not on the Avengers. This is an Avengers book. Okay, well, you know what? He there could aren't, be! There aren't any Eternals on this team. Put him on there. Well, I don't, I don't want to write about him. That's it. That's it. I don't care that, like, that would be what should narratively occur. Right. But having read your run on Avengers, you don't seem to want to write about any of them. Because none of them are doing anything interesting. Or acting in character. We talk about they're punching things, that's, they're turning giant. That's not enough. This entire story should have been <laughs> the the million year BC Avengers, and well, not this. They did that already. There's a whole book about that. Oh, that are that, well, that already did that. happened. Yeah, we saw we're that refer, already. We're referring back to characters yeah. from another book. Yeah, when and we of do course, that. like you know, the Avengers are gonna fight the Avengers from a million years ago. Why would they do that? You know, because like... Because they exist. Because they exist. Because, because good guys can't team up with good guys easily. Not, not right away. First. Not first. Not the first time. Yeah, they gotta fight first. They don't have their shit together like villains do. Right. Hey, you know what would be... We you know would really fuck up the good guys' days if we teamed up. Good point. Let's do it. We should get burgers afterwards, too. Yes. But they never get burgers because then their egos get in the way. Yeah. They're like, you fool! How come you're not pulling your own weight? I'm pulling my weight. What about you, you asshole? <laughs> Ah! Why are you putting pickles on that delicious burger and ruining it? What are you talking about? The pickles have a nice contrast and mouthfeel to the burger. I can't believe you're using raw onion, you monster! <laughs> it's just gonna drag out of the burger and it's gonna pull any contact. All right, it. that's it. Blah. Ah! <laughs> we should never team up. Why does it? Why do we always think this is gonna work? All right, all right. New plan. New plan. We'll team up. We'll get pizza afterwards. Okay. All right. Pineapple. What do you want? <sighs> Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> I like Hawaiian pizza. Nobody likes pineapple on pizza. That's disgusting. It's, it's not a, a pizza contrast. at that point. It's a goddamn dessert. Anyway, that's Avengers. I, I, this is completely just me bitching about this book, and I'm sorry. I, I, I don't like to just just rag on a book for an hour and a half. Was this like, book well received? Hey, it deserves it. Um, no. <laughs> like, here's the thing. I, I Actually, I, I wanted to look it up. I wanted to see if I was, like, the only one. Am I the asshole? Right. Am I the person who thought this was, like, hollow and lame? And uh, for the most part, like a lot of reviews that I looked at, but I didn't have time to look at them all. I, I didn't yeah. read every review. I didn't read your review, <laughs> but I read a lot of them, and they were all kind of like the at, nobody in, on the in the comic book YouTube spectrum wants to go on record and say I didn't like a thing. Yeah, but you could tell what the language has become, 
and a number of them were like, hey, yeah, you know, I mean, it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it like a three out of five. <laughs> Oh, three, three, out three and a half out of five. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, that's oh, comic wow. book death. Right. It's like three out of five, you asshole. Just say it sucks. Like, uh, it's just okay. say you don't like that they abused Celestials for no reason. Well, and made, uh, just, just to pave the way for a boring Avengers book. Right. Just say it, nothing in this book was earned. You know yes. what? You know what everyone's reaction to this book should be? That. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is a cool drawing. Yes. But, like, is that even interesting? Is it fun to, like, retcon? You don't just kill all the Celestials, right? It's not enough you kill the Celestials right. kill the Eternals. You also retconned the origins of humanity. <laughs> not just humanity, all life on Earth. Everything? Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Like, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna reboot the Avengers book. I'm thinking also all of everything. Like, everything ever. Oh, and also, like, Tony Stark's dad's Mephisto now. And, um, <laughs> just anything, anything ever. Yeah. yeah. Jason Aaron's a fine writer. I do enjoy his work, but, like, and, and when I heard but that he was this. doing Avengers, I'm like, yeah! And I read this, and I'm like, okay. No, what happened? God. Yeah, and I was like, this... It's, it's just, it's too bad, because if you were going to do this, I feel like this could be a cool event. Right. If like yes. if in time and it space could to like be a breathe. cool event, yeah. Having and the... if you incorporated like the X Men and like all the people who would be involved, yes. and it just invites all those questions. Yes. Yeah. Why is it a team of seven people? I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> like eight people, when it really ought to be the entire Earth fighting these things. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I guess you could say the same thing about when uh, the Fantastic Four fight Galactus. Right. It's like, well, that should be ever all the heroes. Yeah. Fighting but Galactus. that was a, that was. A long time ago. That was a long time ago before we figured all this stuff out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that was their first encounter with something that large and that destructive. Yeah. Well, and by the same token, uh, they should have killed the, the 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 Fantastic Four and the X Men and uh, every other team on Earth. Yeah, yeah why since, wouldn't they? Since they also would have gotten in the way. The yeah, champions too. Kill that's them. right. Like, yeah. if that's going to be your modus operandi for dealing with problems, uh, is to yeah. Kill how them. come? How come Magneto doesn't go up and just rip all the Celestials limb from uh, limb since oh, he's super yeah. powerful? Now, I wonder that. if they're actually made of metal or if that's a thing. I would like to see. They that. just look like metal. It's not metal. It's space metal. You know, it's, they're made of paper. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> I like no, how, sir, that's metal. <laughs> I like how to go one on one with the celestial. It's not that like they're like exotically powered. It's just that they're really big. Right. It's if just you could so be big, really big, you'd be a celestial. Then, <laughs> like, how come Iron Man doesn't take his fucking suit and go off into the cosmos and start seeding life himself? <laughs> it's in the description if you want to buy it. Not, not a recommendation. No. Hey, no. three out of five. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, scathing oh, burn. <laughs> This story is a sprawling epic with beautiful imagery. That is true. Okay, right. it's a sprawling accurate. epic and because it spans time. Some of those images are quite beautiful. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So yes, there you go. Yeah. That's a true that statement. That is accurate. <laughs> yeah. Technically accurate. Does it say if it's good or not? No. All right, there no. we go. This one's a great one. You can't help but feel as though you're going to be in for an incredibly wild ride. You can't help but <laughs> feel that. It doesn't happen, I mean, but you can't help but feel. Oh, is anymore. that why it's it's attributed to a company I've never heard of? Oh, Same with God. these guys. Like, yeah, where's our quote? That's like, this is an is a waking nightmare <laughs> of from which from which there is no respite. Yeah. Like, what, what, what's a thinly veiled review? We, what is a, what's a three out of five review we can give this thing? <laughs> it's readable. No, 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 well, like, that, that, uh, that, that, like, technically describes exactly what we're talking about. Like, uh, where it's like, this is so... If you want a book where Celestials are fucking <laughs> depowered <laughs> and brought down to a level where giant beans yeah. can fight them, this is your book. Forget everything you thought you knew oh, there you go. about the Marvel Universe. Yep. There's your quote. It's a book full of sound and fury. Oh. <laughs> that, that is very thinly veiled. I like that. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys with another episode of Back Issues. I promise we're not doing any more of Aaron's Avengers, so I don't have to get into it. All right, well, that's that. We'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So long. Thanks for watching.